Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at the MSI Pro B650M-P. This is a very inexpensive motherboard from the good people over at MSI. This is one I've actually purchased myself and my own money. It's actually, not a lot of money because I bought it off of eBay and it was a used bargain. Picked this up for somewhere in the region of about £80, which potentially Obviously with motherboards these days, you have to be a bit careful. The pins on the motherboards are very delicate. And if you look through eBay at any point, you'll see that spares or repairs is the key thing to look out for. If it says spares or repairs, chances are it's a bent pin, avoid it. Anyway, I'm getting off topic here. So we're gonna take a look at this board today, see what it's all about, go through some of the connectivity. I actually think, spoiler alert, this is actually a really good board. And if you can pick it up for a good price used, go for it. If you can find it on the new market, somewhere around the 120 to 130 pounds mark at the end of 2023, then I think you're actually looking at a pretty decent all round board. It has a slight weakness, which is the VRM, but we'll take a look at that a little bit later. And also you can take a look at the Mike's Unboxing Beanie Hats, which have now just come back in stock, available in black or pink. If you're interested in purchasing one for yourself, head over to our Discord and uh, we'll try and sort one out for you. With that said, let's get on with it. So let's start off with a quick tour of what is going on in the box and what we actually get. Obviously you get the motherboard itself. Now for those of you that are watching and maybe you've zoomed in, the processor on there is the Ryzen 5 7500F. I managed to pick that up as a really spectacular deal from AliExpress. I will try and link that in the description below, but with AliExpress sellers come and go, so it's a little bit of a, uh, a crapshoot on that, but it doesn't come with it. That's not included. That's just basically keeping the pins in place at the moment. Anyway, so on the box itself, you can see, so it's the Pro B650M-P, part of MSI's Pro series. So these are really tailored towards offices. It doesn't have PCI Express Gen 5 support, unfortunately, but it does have PCI Express Gen 4, which I think for most people, especially if you're looking at more budget areas of the market, this is gonna be absolutely fine. And it is based on the B650 chipset. So we do have a little bit of overclocking ability there, and also things like Expo and that kind of thing for overclocking RAM. On the back of the box, it goes over some of the key features as pointed out here. So DDR5 memory support, supports up to DDR5 memory up to 192 gigabytes. I think that's right, or 196, one of the two. Basically, you can put 48 gigs DIMMs in each one of the four slots available. Also supports 2.5 gigabit LAN, so that's the Realtek RTL 8125 chipset as we quite commonly see these days. Uh, also, Lightning Gen 4 support, as we've mentioned already. And it's got the Frozer AI cooling, which I absolutely hate, to be honest with you. It's in the MSI Center and it's a horrendous piece of software, but I would suggest not using it. Just take control of the fans yourself. Hey, we've done plenty of videos on that and we'll probably do one on this one as well, just to uh, make sure that's covered. Also at the bottom there, gives you specifications. So I'll try and give you a close up of that so you can see what the deal is, but we'll go through it all anyway. And also gives you a layout of the rear IO. When it comes to looking actually inside the box, there's very, very little, no user manual. There's a very basic guide for actually how to install a processor. There's the regulatory information. You get a IO shield, which uh, is not captive as you can guess because I've got it in my hands. And also something which you'll notice on this, it doesn't tell you which one of the ports on the back of the motherboard is the one for actually doing a BIOS flash. And it doesn't tell you on the box either. So in order to find out which port is actually necessary for doing a BIOS flash, you need a PC or a digital device to access the internet to find out. So yeah, anyway, that's my one little bugbear. The other bugbear is this kind of waste of plastic. So they include a SATA cable, not a pair, a SATA cable. Someone actually probably at the factory goes through the bags of two and actually takes one out and then reseals it. They probably don't, but you get my point. At least two, come on, don't be so tight. But them being tight can be redeemed some way with this board. So there's actually some pretty cool stuff going on here. I actually quite like the layout. The only thing which I think spoils it just slightly is the positioning of the PCI Express slot for your graphics card being the lower slot. I would have loved to have seen that the next slot up just to give you a little bit more room for those micro ATX graphics cards. When you've got it into a micro ATX case, graphics cards are gonna be really close to that bottom. So unless you've got a ventilated bottom section, you potentially might struggle with cooling. So that is definitely something to be considerate of when you're purchasing a micro ATX motherboard. Other than that, this ticks pretty much all the boxes you could possibly want. Bass flashback, utilities built in. You also got eight pin power connector up here in this top left hand corner. And it's nice to see that it's a nice open section. So when you're trying to fiddle around with your cable, trying to plug it in, it's a nice easy open area to get to. 
Now it's easy to get to because of one of the other sort of limiting factors. So the VRM on this, from what I can tell, it looks like it's a six plus one plus two or six plus two plus one, however you work it out. I'm not entirely sure how the VRM is configured on this. I've tried to tap into MSI's technology databases to see if I can find anything and everyone seems pretty much in the dark, but it does appear there's six phases for the main CPU side of it anyway. Um, you'll see some pictures of this with the heatsink taken off. It's a very small heatsink. So don't be thinking, getting this board, getting a 7950X in there and overclocking the snot out of it, not gonna happen. The VRMs aren't gonna cope with that. Realistically, I would say this is more suited for 65 watt parts or possibly some of the 8000 series APUs which are due out very shortly. That I think is where this board is aimed for. Of course you can do, and it does support the 7950X and it is listed on the compatibility website, but the VRM, if you're looking at doing some overclocking on it, it probably isn't gonna do too well on it. The kind of sister board of this, the full ATX version, the B650-P, actually does do quite well when it comes to the VRM. It's a, it looks like a very similar setup, although there is an additional cooler along this top section. So don't expect it to work wonders in that regard, but for most systems, and actually when I was using this with the 7500F, it was absolutely great. And the VRM temperatures were in the 50s, if that, which is absolutely fine. Anyway, so moving on, so not much else going on at the top here. You've got your standard AM5 socket, love it or hate it. You also got the AM5 mounting brackets, which are generally backwards compatible with AM4, depending on your CPU cooler. Do check before you make the leap. Uh, when it comes to fan headers, actually, you've got five fan headers on here, which is actually quite spectacular for a micro ATX motherboard. So you've got a CPU header, this one here. You've also then got a pump header. And then next to that, there is a system fan header. So you've got a nice little bunch of headers there for setting up your fans. And as with all MSI headers, they can be configured to be either PWM, DC control, full speed, half speed, whatever you want to do. Again, we've done tons of videos on how to set those up. So if you want to know how to do that, we will try and link the videos in the description below. Next up, there is a kind of like a, a debugging port. Don't know really why you, you need that. It's more for a factory thing. Next up, there is a 12 volt RGB header. Uh, moving to the side, there is a five volt three pin addressable RGB header. Yay, we always like to see those on Mike's unboxing. And next that, something else we always like to see is a debug LED. These are great, especially with modern builds getting more and more complex. When you put your system together for the first time and things aren't working, it's really great to have some kind of visual representation of what the problem may be. So whether it's your CPU, whether it's your RAM, whether it is the VGA device, or whether it's the boot, it can't find a boot drive, whatever it might be, these will be very, very helpful. And especially when you're doing things like BOSS flashing, or when you're doing memory training for the first time and you're thinking, oh God, why have I got no display? This is taking forever. This board can take a very long time to train the RAM for the first time. I've found this out firsthand. I've gone from being like three minutes for a boot down to about 20 seconds. So don't worry, the first few times it will take a long time, but it does get significantly better. We have also done a video on how to do that, which uh, again, I'll try and link in the video description. If not, just search Mike's Unboxing for DDR5 and you'll soon find it. Anyway, moving on from that, so RAM slots, as we said, so 192 or 196 gigs, I never get that right, so 48 and 48 is 96, yeah, 192, some quick math there, or mathematics if you're English. Uh, so four RAM slots supporting up to DDR5, 7200 mega transfers per second. As always with AM5 stuff, uh, memory speeds are somewhat in limbo. So don't expect to put four sticks of 48 gig RAM in there, and them all to work at 7200 mega transfers per second with your processor. It's unlikely to happen. Anyway, moving on from the RAM slot, so we've got the heatsink here, tiny little heatsink over the B650 chipset. Not a great deal of heat generated by that, so it doesn't need a great deal, so that's absolutely fine. Um, actually, going back up, USB type C front panel header. Actually quite handy to have that, especially more modern technology. Starting to see those being integrated in cases now, so that's handy. Underneath that, the old school USB 3.0 type A headers, uh, the twin port there. You've also got four SATA ports, so one, two, and three, four, so either come out the bottom or come out the side, whichever you want to use. I know someone's gonna ask this. Um, those you can use, and you can use both M.2s at the same time. The chipset doesn't have any limitations in that regard, and also if you stick everything in all your PCI slots, there's no disabling of SATA ports, so just to clarify that. Uh, they've done some pretty clever stuff with the, how the chipset works, 
and the lanes which are available from the CPU. So that all works. You can plug basically everything in at the same time and it will still work. Uh, let's go back over to this section here. So we've got a TPM header. If you want to use a separate TPM, the TPM headers were all the rage about a year ago. And then now they're kind of like, you never hear about it. But I suppose that was when Windows 11 came out and everyone's like, oh my God, I need TPM. Anyway, moving on. Uh, there's another fan header here on the back. So if you've got a chassis fan in this kind of area by your rear IO, you can hook one up straight away there. That's pretty handy. This slot here is your M.2, primary M.2. This one is powered from the CPU. So this is gonna be PCI Express Gen 4x4. Unfortunately, it's not PCI Express Gen 5. That would've been really nice to see. But part of the cutbacks and having the other flexibility going on here, is you do have a slight reduction in speed for that top slot. Underneath that, PCI Express Gen 4 again, times 16 slot, fully wired for times 16, and also metal in there to support it, so for those slightly heavier graphics cards. Uh, underneath that, PCI Express Gen 3 times 1 port, so you've got two of those. Those, I'm not too sure really what you'd use those for in this configuration. Wi-Fi cards, possibly, because this doesn't have Wi-Fi on it but then you're going to find it awfully close to the intake for your graphics card. So those are a little bit mute points, really. You have got underneath there as well, another PCI Express Gen 4x4 M.2 slot. Both M.2 slots are NVMe only. So don't expect to put SATA based M.2 drives on here. They simply will not work. Uh, there's actually a really cool little mechanism on here for attaching the drives. Normally these Two mounting pillars are separate in bags when you get the motherboard. I've installed them anyway, just so you can see where they are. But it's got the MSI fast release clip. So essentially, you're probably seeing from B-roll anyway, you take the drive, move the clip round, it flips out and you can remove your drive. So you don't need a screwdriver, apart from to install them for the first time when you uh, put them onto the motherboard. But after that, swapping drives, very simple to do. Uh, so this one here, front panel connections. Above that, there is a very, very small, absolutely tiny, you probably miss it if you didn't know it was there, another addressable RGB header. So literally just between the heatsink there and the front panel connector. Then you've got JFP2, which is the extension of the front panel connector. That's for speakers or buzzers, that sort of thing. Next up, there is a pair of USB 2.0 headers. Next to the USB ports at the bottom there, there's the last of our fan headers. You've also got chassis intrusion and CMOS reset pins. Moving slightly along from there, there is a COM port header. So if you want to use an old fashioned serial port, COM port you can do on there. Then there's another debug port and our last RGB header. So that's 12 volt. So you've got two 12 volt headers and two five volt headers. So pretty much all bases covered there. Uh, PCI Express slots, as we said already. Next up, we've got our onboard audio. So the audio on this isn't great. ALC897 chipset by Realtek. Supports 5.1, 7.1, all that kind of stuff. You can tie the ports together. It's not bad. You have got some decent capacitors on there, so relatively low noise if you're using the onboard sound. Again, for what this is kind of aimed at, the kind of lower end budget builds or business systems, absolutely fine for most tasks, gaming, all that sort of stuff. If you want better sound, just plug in a headset or you can get DACs, etc., to plug in, but generally the 897 is uh, tried and tested and works pretty well. And last but not least on this section, you've got the battery there for the BIOS. A little bit of an unusual place and actually really difficult to get to. So if you do need to reset your CMOS for some reason and it's not doing it by the pins, if you want to remove the battery, you do basically have to remove the graphics card because that is going to be right in the way. You might be able to carefully maneuver out, but realistically, I think it's going to be a GPU out situation. Moving around to the back here, don't get too excited. There isn't a great deal here. Got your BIOS flashback button. That's always a nice thing to do. We've also done a video on that, so if you want to see how to flash the BIOS on one of these, pretty straightforward, as long as you know which port is for actually flashing the BIOS, which, if you're not too sure, it's the bottom one there underneath the PS2 port, which is basically documented in one place that I could find online. Not in any of the manuals, not even on the box, so yeah, it is that one, I find out eventually. So HDMI and DisplayPort, DisplayPort 1.4, HDMI 2.0. That's going to be great for the upcoming 8000 series APUs, which are due out very shortly. Those look to be really interesting with their RDNA 3 chips based in them. So yeah, looking forward to seeing what those uh, are actually like. Next that, this is going to be more for the business users. So there is a VGA port on there, which I didn't even think they worked with VGA these days, but clearly it does because they've got the port on there. So there you go. Uh, PS2, again, harking back to the kind of business environment. PS2 ports are still used in businesses along with VGA ports for older kit, which is lying around. Two USB 2.0s, bottom one being BIOS flashback. Another USB 2.0, pair of those. USB 3.0, that's Gen 3.2, Gen 1. 
and then you've got your generation 2 or generate usb 3.2 gen 2 the faster port so those are 5 gigabit per second those are 10 gigabit per second and then above that you've got the 2.5 gig lan so realtek rtl 8125 chipset as we said before backwards compatible with um, gigabit and 10100 and then you've got your three output jacks color coded so earphone or speakers on the green blue is for line level and the pink is for a microphone so there you go there is a look at the msi pro b650 m-p i gotta be honest with you i got it for 80 pounds so i'm over the moon it's fantastic you cannot find a decent board for love nor money for that sort of money realistically at the moment for the am5 sockets bear in mind this has got pretty much everything that i would expect to see from it so two m.2 slots tick four ram slots tick boss flashback excellent can't go wrong yeah uh adjustable rgb ports that's always a nice thing to see it's just a great all-round board and this reminds me a lot of the previous generation the msi b550 pro vdh wi-fi doesn't have the wi-fi a little bit of a diner but in terms of the pro vdh that was a great board it basically supported everything and it was a little bit cheaper was micro atx and was one of those kind of entry level boards which give you basically all the features that you'd want from the b550 chipset but at a much lower cost and effectively this i feel is its kind of spiritual successor to it and yeah i'm pretty pleased with it overall but what i think about it doesn't really matter what you think about it does so let us know in the comment section what you think about this board are you likely to pick one up are you going to be on the hunt for one are you a little bit concerned that msi's ddr5 boot times are a little bit on the long side especially in comparison with other manufacturers like i said earlier this does share that problem um, ddr5 speeds to begin with were absolutely horrendous i thought the board was dead but after a little bit of tweaking and boss updates etc now i've got it down to actually booting into windows within 20 seconds which i think is absolutely fine but again let us know what you think in the comment section i think that's going to wrap this one up i've been mike this is mike's unboxing reviews and how to and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video thanks for watching